Welcome to Minding Your Business, the show for really interesting and diverse entrepreneurs. We have an extremely interesting guest here with us this evening. It was amazing to me to find out how many different connections we had and how many things we had in common. Uh, we both went to uh, Columbia University, the School of General Studies. Um, he's a more recent graduate than I am, but we still both came through the same school, and that's actually um, how we met. And he is also producing, working on producing his own show at BronxNet, where he's going to interview um, people in the field of education. So, and that's going to be really very interesting. It also turns out that he and the director for our show, who's my son, play softball together in Central Park, which is how they spend their summers. And they didn't even know that they were both in the same league, which is made up of schools around the country, universities and colleges around the country. So um, I am really happy to have with us this evening, Jose Giralt. Jose, it proves what a small world we live in, and it's just such a delight to have you here on the show. It's just, uh, I, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really thrilled because we have so much to talk about. You are a very talented photographer. You have your own business, and which we're going to hear about. You're going to tell us about, and what? By the way, how did the uh, softball playoffs? turn out. <laughs> I mean, you were Columbia and uh, Ed is MIT and Penn. So um, did you actually, did your teams play each other or no? No, we didn't. But first of all, thank you for having me, June. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Oh, thank and you. And as far as the Columbia alumni softball team, uh, we did win in the first round, which is one more round than we had last year. So we, uh, we beat the NYU Business School mm. in, uh, in the first round. Okay. And then in the second round, the uh, Michigan School of Business was a tough opponent. And, uh, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, next, next uh, year, next summer, we have to, with you being a professional photographer, I know that you are also playing, but at the same time, it'd be fun for you to take some uh, pictures. I went to one of the games once, and I took some pictures that we showed here. And... Um, it, it's nice to for people to see that besides your professions, you do other interesting things for great workouts yes. <laughs> during yes. the summer. So now, as I said, we know each other as uh, both having graduated from Columbia in the School of General Studies and being on the alumni committee for um, helping the school to raise funds as well. And you are a recent graduate, though. When did you graduate? I graduated in May of 2013. I, I actually finished my studies mm -hmm. in uh, December and then of 2012, and mm. then became what they call a February of 2013 graduate. I uh, experienced the same oh, thing. Okay. I don't believe that. So yeah, as, you, yeah, yeah. as you know, there's only one graduation ceremony, right. however. Right. So right, that's right. only in <laughs> May. So <laughs> we ended up walking in May of 2013. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Just a wonderful experience to be on campus during that ceremony. Yeah, it's a nice so campus. Yes. Nice campus. Yes. I had a group of alums uh, on the show um, a month or so ago. So, and it's nice to to hear how everyone came from someplace else, so to speak. Uh, before they decided to finish their uh, undergraduate work um, in uh, at Columbia University, and it's really and I mean you certainly are not any different from those uh, that were on the show before coming through uh, the school. Now, were you actually a phot professional photographer for 22 years before you went to Columbia? Well, I guess you could say I was a professional photographic printer. However, I did plenty of photographic work on my own too. Mm -hmm. But we're talking, uh, to use um, a modern expression, we're talking about something uh, so long ago when people used to have film in their cameras. You know, I've got a big box <laughs> <laughs> of film that one day I'm saying, hmm, I really should get this uh, <laughs> developed. Some surprises as to what might be on some of the uh, the film, but yeah, I still have a lot of that film. 
Well, some of your viewers may remember there was a time here in New York where we actually had a photo district. Uh, approximately in the 40s? From, uh, well, I, I'm saying I into the 70s, the 80s, even into the 90s, up until... No, 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 I mean in, the, in, the, uh, in 40th oh, Street, around yes. that neighborhood. No, no, it was actually like from 14th Street up, on, up to around 32nd Street. It was just no. filled with photographer studios and mm -hmm. labs. There's mm -hmm. still a few photo labs you can find uh, around 23rd Street mainly, a few big ones. Uh, but, but it was just filled with uh, darkroom labs yeah. because all the photography was film-based. Yeah. And so all New York being the capital of advertising, of fashion, of oh, so many sure. other things. and actresses and exactly. actors needing uh, mug shots, and not mug shots, but <laughs> headshots. <laughs> headshots. <laughs> right, Some right. of them turned into mug shots, but that's, <laughs> we won't go into right, that. Right. <laughs> that's more the current group now. <laughs> True, right, <laughs> true. So you can just imagine all that photographic work, which was developing film, yeah. printing film, uh, that needed to be done at that time. Mm. And it, it was a comfortable living, actually. For, for a good amount of time. And, and many of us who worked in the dark room, we would supplement our uh, income with uh, the occasional photo shoot on a weekend. Some mm. of us, uh, not me personally, but some of them were wedding photographers on the weekend. And uh, the ability to develop our own film, to print it, it, it helped us oh, have sure. a comfortable in income back then. Yeah. But you know Times, what happened? Things changed. Exactly. Digital the, technologies yeah, came along yeah, yeah. and pretty much decimated mm -hmm. uh, photography, film-based photography, mm -hmm. I should say, because obviously photography is more popular than ever, but it's all digital or uh, based on uh, right. digital capture. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and even the printing of photographs isn't as popular as it was because people share it through social media, through the internet. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot about that lately. <laughs> right, yeah. even when they don't want people it. People in yes. different stages right. of dress or it's, not dressing right. uh, have had a lot of their photos uh, being uploaded that, into, onto, uh, into the cloud or from the right. clouds onto the internet. That's the negative side of photography where uh, back in my day uh, it would have been more, much more difficult. It was still possible to steal a negative, steal oh, sure. a, but it would have been much more difficult right. to have these things happen uh, back when photography was based on, on film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, you, have, you have your own photography studio at this point and you've developed your own business and I'd love to see and show our viewers some of your work. And I, I consider you the, um, the Degas, the painter, of uh, photography. He, you'd done a lot of pictures of dancers. Yes, yes. And Degas was uh, famous for doing paintings of dancers. So I'd like to take a look. Let's look at some of your work and you can Very tell good. us what each one is okay. as, uh, as we go. So um, your first uh, piece is of uh, a group of dancers. Now, did you take these uh, photos at uh, Columbia? Uh, mostly, yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we can start looking at those photos anytime you're ready to um, start putting them up and uh, you can describe them as uh, they come up. Now this photograph, uh, uh, it, it has a particular interest to me because what I want your audience to know is that these students, and these are very young students actually, they're undergraduates, uh, they're, they love to dance so much that they're actually setting aside time of like from 10 to midnight on top of uh, one of the top floors in a uh, building at Columbia. And if you look at the floor... Oh, the School of International it, Studies. It, exactly. Yeah, I, I recognize it. Right. Uh, and, and I mean, are these students, though, of Columbia? Yes, they as are. Well? These are. And, but they also are former dancers or current dancers, the, even though they're getting their degrees in something else. Mm -hmm. Right. They, they mm -hmm. love to mm -hmm. dance. But mm -hmm. if you notice... Okay, the, let's, let's take a look at another one. Yes. And, uh, oh, well, that's here nice. they are in action. There you uh -huh, go. Uh huh. Uh huh. There they are. And is this a particular style of dancing? Because their These... costumes are uh, not, you know, classical or modern uh, dance. Right. Looking. This was a group that was trying to do like a hybrid of some of the dancing you would typically see in a Bollywood movie from India, ah, uh -huh. but with modern moves. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's actually uh, referencing some modern dance and some traditional dances of okay, India. Okay, well, let's take a look at another one. And, oh, now this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, 
I would do a picture like this only because I wouldn't know how to hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm certain that you had to compose this. How do, is this a special effect that, uh, that's really very interesting. Yes, well this is quite simply you leave the shutter open on your camera for a second or two. Mm -hmm. Now because they're dancers and they're constantly moving, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to show that motion and that action, but of course... As opposed to a video. Uh, right, as opposed to a video, or as you'll see later, as opposed to freezing them in action. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Now, oh, that's interesting. Exactly, here's the opposite uh, effect where I use a higher shutter speed to freeze them. Mm -hmm. So in essence, they become like statues. Right, now um, this is def without a doubt classical uh, yes, ballet. Exactly. As I see, she has on points, exactly. uh, toe shoes. Uh -huh. And you so. see the choreographer uh, in the background by mm -hmm. the mirrored wall uh, observing and, and making sure they're going through the, the mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we can go to the next one. And again here the technique of freezing. Now what I wanted to do with this image in particular is show you how uh, the dancers seem to be on top of each other. Even mm -hmm. though once you're in that uh, rehearsal studio it, it is spacious, but I wanted to give that, uh, that feeling that uh, you see the, the dancer from the left uh, mm -hmm. appearing into the space, the right. one in the middle is right. frozen, yeah. and then there's two other dancers. Uh, it, it, to to the, someone with an untrained dance eye, mm -hmm. it, it seems very frenetic. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot going on, but they, they don't bump into each other. Oh my gosh, <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they know exactly oh, what they're doing yeah, with their bodies. Everybody knows where they're supposed to be. Yes, yeah. they're Let's amazing. Let's take a look at another one. And this is just oh, incredible that's so, that's discipline. Lovely. Yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah. to to know that th th they're lis listening to the music, uh, mm -hmm. moving their bodies exactly in the same way at the same time. I just think this exemplifies the discipline it, of you know, of a dancer. Please. It's one of the most disciplined art forms that exists. I studied ballet for many, many, many years. <laughs> and uh, coming out of the School of Performing Arts. And uh, it's wonderful, wonderful uh, discipline for your body that c stays with you throughout, uh, throughout your life, really. No. And um, this, this is wonderful. And I think this might be the last one of this group, uh, or is there one more that you have of this group? Uh, I think this might be the last yeah. one. So there tell us. Uh, you are working on becoming a, a producer yourself at BronxNet? Correct. Now that's where Lehman, that's on the campus of Lehman College? Correct, in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. yes, what made you decide to, uh, to do this? Well, I know that after my uh, degree at Columbia, I wanted to do something, not just for my uh, artistic expression, but also something more on the level of being more socially engaged with issues that affect my community. I live in the Bronx mm -hmm. and uh, as many people know the Bronx uh, suffers from terrible rates of poverty mm -hmm. and it's one thing to just associate poverty with with income mm -hmm. but it's quite another to see how a college education can be so important in helping people come out of poverty and it can make a lives. difference. I mean, it makes a difference in how people view themselves or feel about themselves and uh, help to boost their ego uh, even and make them feel that there's something more than what it is that they are, are existing on or existing in at the current time. So this is a wonderful uh, idea that, that you have. Are you going to be talking to those who are aspiring to go to college or those who are already in or those who are educating those who are going to college? I mean, what's going to be the focal point of your program? Well, the answer is yes to all your questions. <laughs> 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 Terrific. Because uh, as far as issues, it will span uh, starting from the age of, let's say, 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. Just as a teenager is entering high school, what kind of courses should he or she be thinking about if they want to pursue a college education? Mm -hmm. um, actually, some would say starting at that point might be late already. Yeah, I was but about to ask you, don't you think it would be a nice idea too to even go back uh, further than waiting until high school? You're absolutely um, right. I, I mean, I uh, have done, um, we have something called Law Day in New York, which I'm sure you've heard of, and uh, attorneys go to different high schools 
to talk to students who are juniors and seniors. And one of the things that I realized in doing this uh, to talk about, you know, the possibility of going to school and becoming and then finally going to law school is that it's already a little late for them to be getting this information. And some of them even brought up the fact that, gee, you know, I wish somebody had talked to me about this uh, a few years ago. That, so, but yeah. I mean, how, how would you approach getting to uh, students sooner? Well, that is absolutely crucial. The, the earlier we start, the better. And, and I have a particular interest in my local community as a Latino. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we suffer from a lot of ignorance as far as what, uh, how to go about getting a college education. Now, we know and value and appreciate that a college education is important, but the details of how to go about it, and certainly to start young is the best. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. for my mm -hmm. show, at least initially, I, I will be focusing more on the uh, high school student, but also be inclusive even of people like me who uh, went through uh, economic changes mm -hmm. as the labor market mm -hmm. changed. Haven't we all? You, but trust me, you're not alone. <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> you are not alone. Uh, I mean, I was reading in today's Wall Street Journal how uh, the retail industry is just really buckling at the knees. And here the holiday season is starting to come up, but yet sales are off 20%, 30%, 10%. I, I, I mean, it's everybody is suffering. Yes. Everybody. And it's not, but in some instances, if uh, the general population, as the saying goes, has a cold um, in other areas, like you're talking about, they have pneumonia. Right, exactly. So exactly. Uh, yeah, this is something that's greatly needed. When, how soon do you think you'll be able to, uh, that you'll start uh, producing? Well, in actually fact, doing shows. this coming Saturday is my last day of training. Congratulations, <laughs> so, wonderful. So then we'll go through a brief orientation uh, mm -hmm. within a week mm -hmm. or two, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we're good to go to produce the show. So I've already reached out to some of the folks I met at Columbia who have been uh, very good, supportive good, good. of this idea to, to bring this knowledge to the uh, mm -hmm. community in the Bronx about how to go about uh, applying and going through the admissions process for college. And then also too, just it having sharing experiences to let people know that, hey, this is possible. Yes. You know, you can do it. Yes. And you don't also, uh, you can do it at any point in life. Yes. It doesn't have exactly. to be coming out of high school, going right into college. You can do some other stuff and sometimes it's better. Yes, absolutely. You bring so much more to uh, the classroom. So, and what you were brought, uh, b brought to the classroom, which is uh, wonderful in your experience, is your wonderful photos. I, and I'd like to look at uh, some more of them. I yes, think you certainly. have, uh, we have some more photos that uh, you took and uh, that your company has um, mm -hmm. in, do you have photos displayed around your studio? The, no, actually, I work out of my home, mm -hmm. so I don't have a, a smart studio thing per to do. se. <laughs> smart thing to do. A lot of people do that but and now, have virtual addresses. Exactly. So if we can bring up some more of those photos, that would be great. I think we have uh, another uh, group that we can look at. And now, did you continue with the theme of um, dancers? Uh, yes. Ah, uh, for, yes, it looks like you, you did. For this show, yes. Uh, I actually started as a sports photographer, ah. but I found so many similarities in dancers. Oh, jeepers, yes. Exactly. So right here, what you see, you, you could I easily... I mean, look at the, the uh, kickers and punters it, in the, um, football. Exactly. And this image, you could call it the coach and the player. When, ah, it, uh -huh. when in fact, what it really is, is the choreographer in the background. Right, And obviously right, right. one and of the, the dancers on the, the floor students, yeah, well, in the, the foreground, well, but mm -hmm. you see them mimicking... Uh, mm -hmm. or actually uh, uh, repeating the same movement. And I just thought it was uh, a clever way of showing the importance of the choreographer mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes. Now, uh, did you do any of this work? Uh, let's take a look at another photograph. Did you do any of this work for the, uh, oh, that's really nice. Yes. For the uh, Columbia newspaper, The Spectator? Actually, none of these, my sports photography mm. was in the uh, uh, a Columbia Spectator almost mm -hmm. every week while I was in school. Almost oh, wow. every week. 
That's and, impressive. But the uh, dance photography was for like individual troops and even some of the individual dancers. Uh, uh, I fell into this by accident, no, really. You might want to think of doing a, <laughs> a photography book yeah. on uh, some of your uh, photos of dancers. I've grown to admire dancers so much. I, I, I never thought of them as athletes before, but after covering them, well, I, I really, I guess I, I just didn't follow dance much mm, is what mm -hmm, I should say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I did follow sports, and I still yeah. love sports. But <laughs> no, to photograph these yeah. dancers... It uh, makes it amazing yes. to look so graceful, but you are incredibly strong. Yes, yes. I, I mean, legs and arms, and torso, every part of your body is involved, particularly in ballet. Right. That, particularly. Those are some of the things I hope I've captured in this photography because, again, her body and then his body behind her, mm -hmm. uh, supporting her. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's, I think we have uh, a few more that mm -hmm. we can look at. Oh, and and talk nice about one. bodies here. <laughs> <laughs> a natural six pack. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, natural because he works right. at dancing not, so much. Um, it, it, it's it's not cosmetic surgery. No, no, <laughs> not in this case. Uh, an incredible dancer uh, who who's gone on since uh, beyond Colombia to dance, uh, and uh, again his body is just telling you the the incredible discipline it takes. Oh, sure. Uh, to dance. Yeah, yeah, and uh, many of my teachers were Russian, mm. and they not only instructed you, but they yelled at you and beat you with a stick. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. My. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. real discipline. That's, oh, cheapers, <laughs> yes. Lots of bruises, but you learn the steps. Wow. <laughs> uh, and we have a, another one that we can go to. Oh, and that's There's nice. a, a whole troupe there dancing. In fact, this is at a... Um, a performance uh, space uh, just a couple of blocks from here, the Manhattan Dance Center, I believe mm, it is. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. this was actually like a final rehearsal they had. And just, again, to, to see these uh, students yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah. be so disciplined is oh, incredible. That's, that's, really, that's really nice. And they're all on point. Mm. Uh -huh. Painful, <laughs> but <laughs> they're on their toes. <laughs> and it's interesting, too, that nobody ever really complains about how painful it is to do toe work. I, I never heard it uh, in company. No, no, it's not all something dancers, you talk about. Yeah. It looks too beautiful and graceful yeah. to talk about the pain and the aches and the uh, awful dis dismemberment, really, that your feet uh, go through. But it, it looks beautiful on stage. Yes, it does. <laughs> And in photographs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and I think we have uh, one or two more. And here's an image that I use to promote my, uh, my business, Geralt Photography. Uh, she's actually a choreographer, but, but hmm. I just felt that this image just encapsulated the idea of just you dance or you die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So just by coincidence, there's a skeleton in the background. Yeah, But yeah, uh, yeah. here she is leading a, a group of dancers that are off camera to the left. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we have one more. Yes. And a uh, final one that's that a nice, I just felt captured the, the, uh, the grace and the strength of dancers, even though you don't see their faces, but just their no, body it, language. It gives you the feeling of, because I see radiators, those look yes, like, in the background. In the studio, and yeah. in some of the studios in Midtown Manhattan, they used to clank. Right. <laughs> still do. Still do, yeah. <laughs> and that gives still you the do. real flavor of what you have to go through yes. if this is your, uh, what you're devoting yourself to. Yes. So, uh, well, this is really very interesting. You really ought to consider uh, putting together a book of um, of your photos and particularly I mean one of dancers one of the sports or mixing the two together to show the similarities between yes. uh, training to be a, an athlete and the athleticism of dance in that kind of training That'd so be wonderful. What, what what are your uh, plans with your uh, photo business how do you market yourself well uh, as Actually, we were speaking earlier about uh, the difficulty I have in promoting myself because mm -hmm. working in the dark room so many years, I, I felt that was like the perfect job for me behind the yeah, scenes, yeah. no one ever. Uh. But, however, I was exposed to wonderful photographers and photography mm -hmm. at that time. But now we're living in different times. Obviously, you have to go out, market yourself, publicize yourself. Um, and what I've done is reach out to, uh, again, some of my uh, Columbia alumni. Good. E even the Summer League with the softball team, I've photographed them, some wonderful images of, of uh, the whole team. 
that mm -hmm. uh, they've mm -hmm. appreciated, and and even shooting some of the other teams there, uh, Cornell and uh, the uh, Michigan School of Business, mm -hmm. and of course now I have my own website through which I can uh, even sell my images. Oh sure, uh, and at, you know something else that you and Ed have uh, our director have in common. You were both art history majors. Oh, okay, <laughs> art history. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, he went on to get his, uh, an MBA and uh, an MS in science uh, or uh, finance rather, mm -hmm. uh, but. He started out also too very creative uh, with um, art history. And what made you select art history? Did it tie into your um, photography at that point? Um, well, first of all, uh, I never thought in a million years I'd be attending Columbia University. Ah. <laughs> never in a million years. And it was only on somewhat of a dare from some of my friends who kept what saying, "What a dare!" <laughs> kept saying, oh, go, you, you should apply, apply to an Ivy League school." I said, they'll never take me. Uh -huh. However, once I got the good news, and it was very emotional, when I did receive that news, uh, I was hap so happy oh, to be there. Well, congratulations. Thank it's not you. an easy road no, <laughs> to no, go. No, it's not. Definitely not. But to go and successfully uh, get to the end of that road, it's just wonderful. And But now, the major thing is, what do you do with it? Right. I, and, right. um, you know, I mean, it's not, nothing to say that you have to stop at this point, especially if you're going to be inspirational to others. Yes. Go to law school. Yes. Yeah. I well. did. <laughs> why not? <laughs> you know, why not? You can combine it with what you want to do uh, with your photography. Um, it it's, gives you a, a grounding that you can go, go in many different directions with. Uh, get a business degree. You had mentioned before right. that you felt that you were lacking in uh, business acumen right. and having uh, an awareness. And this is something that, and I started mentioning to you that one of the things that I do, that I do, is teach lawyers how to open a law practice and how to run a business because they might be fantastic when it comes to having knowledge of the law. But start talking to them about workers' compensation mm. or how to bill and collecting on that bill, and you get, it's like a deer caught in headlights, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can relate to that feeling. I certainly can. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I will say this about going to Columbia. The one thing that it instilled in me is that I will always, for the rest of my life, be a lifelong learner.